Tulips are looking gorgeous today. All of them open. Absolutely wonderful. And look at the pear tree, full of blossom. Absolutely gorgeous. And it's warm, so bees are around. So this year I'm hoping that it's gonna be pollinated, unlike last year, where we didn't get any fruit. So, fingers crossed. Well, my path is doing okay. It's been a bit windier and you can see there's a bit of overflow, but that's okay. It'll settle down, I think. Well, today, I've got a couple of things I'd like to do, but it's a very leisurely day. So I think I might just do a bit of this construction and see if I can get this bed finished. And hopefully it won't take me too long. But I'm not in any hurry because it's quite warm and I'm in my t-shirt. Fantastic. Right, let's get on. <laughs> Well, they shape up quite nicely, if I'm honest. And they're not too much difficult to piece together. And I think they'll last a fair while. So if you see any of these poles, then I recommend them for raised beds. They're quick and fairly easy. You do need the right bolts, but they're not too expensive. Still getting some cooch grass. Put it back where it belongs, over the other side. Right, just gonna get this level. And this bed should be pretty much good to go. I've got to work out quite what to do with that one. I think I'm gonna use those last two pieces of pole to do the front. And it's gonna be a real mishmash, that one. Partly board, partly poles, but it will get me through this season until I decide to do something a bit different. I'll probably maybe get one or two more of these poles just to finish it off looking the same. But there we go, we'll see. Right, I'll bring you back when I'm dug. Well, not dug, you know, leveled. Right, I'm going to put these hoops on here because I've got a few spare. I'm not going to do that blue hose anymore because it doesn't work well for me. But I know a lot of people have a great deal of faith in it, so more power to your elbow. Right, one more. And I leave myself about six inches from the end because that gives me somewhere to pull the net down to. And I'll get a net on this fairly quickly because the cats will get in it. There we go. I've got one little bit to finish over in there, but my drill has just about had it for today. So when I do these, for the front, I'll just finish that off. Good times. Whilst the seeds are growing, I'm catching up with no end of little jobs. So this one's been on my list for a long time. This hoop just continually falls over in the wind and the rain. So I'm just gonna stand it back up again. And to do that, I'm gonna use a bit more of this plumber's tape, it makes very simple brackets. Just twist them round and make the shape you want and then cut them off and you've got yourself a ready-made bracket. 
I just use a very old pair of secateurs. I'm going to make three or four of these because I just know there's another couple of poles that need attention. So I'll make a couple of these while I'm at it and then I can use those on the other poles. Nice and firm, and then I'll do the other end as well. I wanted to show you this bed because this is far and away the worst bed that I've got in terms of weed growth. And it's not really a problem as I'll show you, but the amount of weed in this this year is more than I've experienced before. Right, let's get this net off. That gives me a chance to test out my path shavings for comfort. It's good. Right, so what's happened here? Well, weed in a bed like this, which has been overtopped with my own homemade compost is really about seed that's not got above its survival temperature when it's in the compost heap. And what's interesting is there really is only one weed, which is this sort of sticky, I call it goose grass. And we've got these poppies and I think these poppies have blown from the poppy bed that I had over there. So I'm not too anxious about those, but this is the one weed that survived. The good thing is, as you can see, with just the tiniest bit of effort, you can get it out, roots and all, without any problem at all. So I'm really not anxious about it. And if that's the only problem with this compost this year, then that's perfect. So I'm gonna work my way around, get this out. I'm gonna leave the poppies because I've just got a fancy that I might transfer them into some buckets or some pots, maybe even pot them up by the raspberries, which is what Izzy's done. She's got Californian poppies. If you've not seen Izzy's channel, then do a bit of a search on YouTube for it. It's great once a month and gives you a big update on how her plot has developed in that month. Fantastic. There we go, done. And it only took me a few minutes. So lots of people ask me about my nets. And to be honest, they're a bit of a mishmash. This is black scaffolding net off of eBay. Cheap as chips, comes in very long lengths and it's fantastic. Never had any problems growing anything in it at all. And I do use some bird sort of prevention netting and that works well as well, but it's a lot more expensive than this and I can't see any real benefits. You can see through it a bit clearer, so I guess a bit more light gets through it. And then of course the EnviroMesh, which is really about keeping the small critters away. And ideal if you've got something that's getting attacked year on year and you wanna stop it. So if you're looking for nets, my recommendation is cheap scaffolding netting from eBay. Good times. It's a mighty fine day today. Bit of low cloud. I might be a bit ambitious. Got my shorts on and well, there's a little bit of a chill in the air, but I'm sure it'll brighten up and get warmer. Today, big day, potato day, amber or bean day. So here's my appropriate seed. You can see the chits on these potatoes is fantastic. So looking forward to putting those in. And I've got some new bald beans, or at least 
seed that I've not saved myself. This is Masterpiece Green. And this is my own Aquadolci um, seed from last year. And hopefully there'll be some seed in there that I can plant as well. So I'll give them a good check. That one's got a hole in it. But we'll pod those and see what we've got and go from there. Well, I get myself a bit organized in here. I'm gonna get these wormeries just out of my way so that I'm not dodging around them. And then the plan is just to put a layer of my repurposed compost into the bottom of the pot, which shouldn't take me too long. And then I will add a little bit more potato fertilizer and that will go on that first layer and then start to put my potatoes into that. I'll put four potatoes in each one of my pots and then just more repurposed compost over the top. And that's it, job done. And then next time I mow the lawn, I'll be putting a layer of grass over the top for moisture retention. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Just takes a little bit of time. And well, I quite enjoy it. So pretty straightforward stuff really. This compost has been fed once already throughout the winter months just to give it a boost because it was used last year. And then I put that small amount of additional potato fertilizer. So it's an organic potato fertilizer. This is an old packet. It's gone a bit damp, but it doesn't make any difference. And then just couple of inches in the bottom of the buckets. And then I take a potato and just remove any of the spare unwanted chits because you don't want them competing. And then that one pushes quite deep into that two inches. And I've learned over the years that if you leave too big a gap, nothing happens in that gap. So if you want more potatoes, I've always found, get the potatoes quite deep in the pot. And I put two into each of these pots. I'll take that chit off and two into that layer and just scoot round. And then when I put the next layer in, I'll put another potato sort of there and another one there. And that'll be the four that go in there. And that I find gives me a good amount, not fantastic, but enough. And hopefully I'll have enough potatoes to do that, four in each. Okay, on with the next steps. Making good progress now. Pretty much cleared up all that compost that was in that composter, give that a bit of a sweep, but I still need more. And so I went to my backup supply, which has actually been here for two years now, not used last year. Interesting, we've got a few small potatoes that have started to sprout in there and that's two years on. So I'll empty a, a bit of this and fill the rest of those. I think I'll move it in that bucket because my barrow is currently full with chippings from a path, which I've got to think where I want to put those. So get on with this. Job done, as I like to say. There we are. All the pots filled up. There was a bit more compost left in that one, which is great. And got the wormeries back in place. Just need to get those underway. I'm no good at wormeries at all, but I'm gonna have another try. So, just waiting for a bit of, <coughs> 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 
excuse me, clippings from the grass to go on top of those. And I think we're way past the frost period now. By the time they show their heads through that soil, we'll be into May, and that's the end of my risk of frost. So, on to the next. So if you save broad beans like I do, putting your saved seed into some water before you plant can pay dividends. You can see there's a few that are floating on the top. There's also a few bugs and they will be a problem if you sow those. So this very short process of giving them a bit of a pre-soak just for a short while pays dividends. Anything that floats to the top, you're not really interested in. And there's quite a few bugs in there. So hopefully I cleared out the bad ones and that gives you a really good chance with what's remaining. So I've been deliberating where to plant these in my beds. Just give it another shape, make sure there's nothing else. That's looking pretty good. So this is where I had broad beans last year and that worked really well. It'll take me two minutes just to take any surface weed off of there and get it ready to go. And of course I left all these canes in because that's a great support structure. So I'm gonna use that again, but I'm also gonna do just a small section down here where I'm gonna grow my saved seed because I'm very interested to see whether saved seed and broad beans is a good thing to do. I'm sure it is, but nothing like a trial to convince yourself. I tend to be a bit reluctant to grow purely saved seed unless I'm really confident. And I am confident with my runner beans, but broad beans is just a little bit different for me. Some of you I'm sure will be having great success with it. Right, so I'm gonna prepare a four by six section up there and this section here. Just go over it with my oscillating hoe and get it ready. Well, this is really very simple indeed. When you're planting broad beans, or at least when I'm planting broad beans, all I'm really doing is getting the spacing about right. I think probably, I like about six, seven inches, maybe eight, and just rows of them. And you just gotta think about how the plant bushes up. It gets about like this and gets to about this height. So. If you plant too dense, you probably inhibit that growth. But just going to put them all into this trog and get going. And in terms of depth, I like to put them down about, I don't know, four inches, three to four inches probably suits me. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of other different methods, but that works well. Right, there we go. Let's get these underway. <clears throat> so I'll start here and just get my spacing about right. I use this dibber, makes quite a sharp pointed hole because what you don't want is a big air gap at the bottom. So I've got one, two, three, four, five across there. And quite simply, one, two, three, four, five. It's really not a very technical process. And about the same distance for the second row. There we go. Get that one ready. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Across the whole bed, I'll get on. I 
just been very leisurely today. I'm just going to finish off <coughs> the morning with a little bit of potting on of these onions. Make some space. There's a few things now ready to be moved on to a larger pot. I'm sort of thinking some of the tomatoes might benefit from that, but we'll see. See how I get on. Right, let's get these cells filled up and then we'll get the onions onto the next stage. I do sift this, but to be honest with you, when it comes to potting on seedlings that are really quite established and reasonably large, I think it's probably unnecessary. But there we are. I've shifted this up to now, so I'm gonna keep going. And it leaves quite a lot of larger lumps in which you can break down and sift further. But I've been adding them to my bed in the interest of just keeping some good organic material going on top of it. And I'm sort of toying with the idea of adding the path rotted down wood chip to this bed. I'm a little bit nervous about the fact that, well, it wasn't pine, it was wood that I recovered from the side of the road um, that had been chipped by some tree surgeons probably. So I don't know its origin other than it was from a tree. And I'm thinking, I don't want to add something to my bed that I'll regret, but it is well rotted down. So I don't know, I don't think it's too big a risk. I'm gonna add perhaps some to one side and just see whether it indeed causes any problems or not. Right, just get these fully filled and then I'll do the onions. Well that's the sowing and potting on done on the onions for this year which is great news and all my onions as I've said before are sown in this polytunnel in the cold weather and never seem to come to any harm. So the next step for these will be going out into the main bedding areas. So that's great news. Well, I've got some watering to do with those potatoes and the broad beans that I've sown. And then that'll be it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then why not like and subscribe? And if you want my updates, then every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Dear